On a trip to California, I captured a time lapse at Owens Valley Radio Observatory, which led to a lot of people asking me how did I create this Milky Way time lapse. So I decided to make this comprehensive video explaining my whole process in hopes to help others that would like to do the same thing with their cameras. First, let's start with the composition and locating the Milky Way. Before going out at night, I like to research areas using Google Maps to help me choose the foreground I'd like to incorporate with my Milky Way time lapse. Different parts of the Milky Way and the direction of the Milky Way bulge will vary depending on the month and time of night it is. This will also vary depending on which hemisphere you're in and what your physical location is on Earth. So to help you figure out all this information, I suggest you determine a location you'd like to create a time lapse at first. Then use apps like TPE or PhotoPills so you can determine when the Milky Way will work best for that location. With these programs, you can see dates and times that will work the best, and you also have to make sure you're going during a new moon, or at least a few days before or after the new moon, when the sky is going to be the darkest. If the moon is out, it might diminish the visibility of the Milky Way galaxy, depending which phase the moon is in. Sometimes, though, a crescent moon can work with a night time lapse to help illuminate the foreground while still being able to pull out some detail of the Milky Way. Now that we have that out of the way, let's talk about my gear and settings for the camera. When shooting a Milky Way time lapse, I like to use a wide angle lens to allow me to capture a good portion of the sky and the foreground. Also remember that video dimensions are typically based around a 16 by 9 crop, so you'll lose some of your image when you turn it into a time lapse video. I like to use my Nikon D800 with a Tamron 15 to 30 millimeter lens, which allows me to create a 6K time lapse video because of the large file size. For time lapses, I set my camera shutter speed to 20 seconds at f2.8 or 3.2 with an ISO between 5000 to 6400. Now I might deviate a little bit from these settings depending on the ambient light in the area, also known as light pollution. I shoot in RAW so sometimes I leave my white balance on auto, however it's in good practice to set your white balance for a time lapse to help maintain consistency. Do some test shots with the above settings and choose a white balance that looks good to you since some people prefer a cooler Milky Way while other people prefer something a little bit warmer. Next let's talk about focusing. There are several ways to achieve accurate focus at night and some may work better or worse for you depending on the camera and lens you're using. Since I'm using an ultra wide angle lens for most of my time lapses, I'm typically setting my focus to infinity while in manual focus mode. Now you may have noticed that setting your camera to infinity mark is actually not too sharp and that's because on some lenses the infinity mark is not accurate at all. To check this, I take my lens out during the day and focus while I'm at f2.8 on some trees or buildings that are really far away to find what I call true infinity. On some lenses you could use a marker to add a reference mark which you could use at night like I've done here with my Sigma fisheye lens. On other lenses like my Nikon 14 and 24 I can't do that. So instead I take a reference photo, which allows me to get pretty close to infinity at night. Then I use a bright star or planet like Jupiter to make sure that my focus is accurate. Zoom in on your LCD screen as far as you could go and adjust your focus ring to make sure that the stars are a sharp circle. Take some test shots and make any adjustments if needed. Another technique I like to use is taking a headlamp or a flashlight and walking about 20 or 30 feet away set that light down and then walk back to your camera and focus on that light source. Also do some test shots to make sure everything is in focus before going back to retrieve your light. The last method I recommend is to focus at infinity around sunset while you still have enough light and then use gaffer's tape to tape down the focus ring. This will prevent the focus ring from moving out of position when you're working at night. Figure out which technique works best for your camera and lens so you're prepared come nightfall. So now that you know the settings, how to focus, and how to plan out the location, let's start capturing a time lapse. Some cameras have time lapse functions built in, which automatically compiles your photos and turns them into a time lapse video, which is great for people that want to save some time and not have to deal with software on their computers, which is needed for time lapse editing. I personally like to have more control over my time lapse images, so I rarely use the built in time lapse function on my camera. Instead, I like to use the camera's built-in intervalometer to take a few hundred consecutive photos, which I edit and turn into a video on my computer. If you don't have a built-in intervalometer on your camera, they make external ones which are relatively inexpensive. There are many different kinds of intervalometers from wired, wireless, and even ones that connect to your smartphone. 
I personally like to keep it simple with a trusty and cheap wired intervalometer when not using my camera's built-in one. So looking at one of the images from my time lapse here, I shot it with a shutter speed of 20 seconds. That means on my intervalometer, I need to have the interval longer than 20 seconds. Typically, I make it one second longer, so in this case, my interval would be 21 seconds, which gives the camera enough time to write the image to the card and then trigger the next exposure. Sometimes with larger file sizes, the camera needs more time to write to the card, so you may need to set your interval with a two or three second buffer. Do some test shots with your camera before going out into the field to make sure that you have the right interval setting. You also want to figure out how many photos you need to take for your time lapse. I create my time lapse videos at 24 frames per second, so that means for every 24 photos I take, it will give me one second of video. I like to capture around 10 seconds of video, so that means I have to take 240 photos at night, which could take about 2 hours to complete. The intervalometer should have an option to input the number of shots you would like to take along with the interval, which I have another video explaining this whole setup process. Once that information is input into your intervalometer, you can let it start shooting. This could take some time, so I like to explore with the second camera or take a nap and come back when it's all done. So now that I have all my photos from Owens Valley Radio Observatory, I'm going to turn them into a video using Lightroom and LR time lapse. Now there are other programs that you can use to create this time lapse video, but I'm really happy about the features in LR time lapse and how seamless it is to work with Lightroom. When downloading your images onto the computer, create a separate folder to put your time lapse images in. If you have more than one time lapse on your card, make sure you keep them separated as well. Then open up LR time lapse and locate that folder. When the images are done importing, I'm going to select basic workflow since this is not a complex time lapse. Next, I want to check off the first and last photo of this time lapse sequence and then hit save. I have to open up Lightroom next and then we're going to drag the files over to Lightroom library module. So we're going to do that right now. We can minimize LR time lapse and then hit import on Lightroom. Once they're done importing, I need to filter out all the images except for the first and last photo. So we're going to select the filter. Now these two images I'm going to edit really quick. It's about a minute long. If you feel like skipping it, go ahead. If you want to see how I edit my Milky Way time lapse, then continue watching. This is pretty much what I do. All right, once we're done editing the photos, we're going to right click and save the metadata. Next, we want to jump back to LR time lapse. And we want to hit the reload button. Once it's done reloading, we're going to hit the auto transition. And this is going to update the metadata for all the images. Now there shouldn't be too much flicker, but I'm going to hit the deflicker anyway and just keep it very low. And hit apply. Then once I'm done with that, hit save. Next we want to jump back to Lightroom and reveal the whole sequence. And we have to update the metadata, so we're going to right click and read the metadata. This might take a few minutes, so I'm going to speed this up.
Once that's done, I want to select all the images and go to File, Export. Now you want to choose the LR Time Lapse option. I typically go with JPEG Original. This gives me large JPEG files and when I export it, it won't give me a 16 by nine crop, which is fine by me because I like to do that later on in Adobe Premiere. So hit export once you select the option that you want. Now I'm gonna speed this up and once it's done, LR time-lapse should open with a box that says render video. You just wanna check off the video, the option that you have available and render that out. And that's pretty much it. I'm gonna speed this up as well. Now, if you want more information about LR time lapse, please watch the videos made by the creator of this program. Once that's done rendering, I'm going to go to the file and open it up, make sure it works. And there we have it, folks. It's not cropped at a 16 by 9 yet. I'll do that later. But there, that's pretty much my workflow with doing Milky Way time lapses. So I hope that helps you guys out. Please like and subscribe, and I will catch you guys later. Bye.